RTX5060Ti の 16GB モデルと 8GB モデルが海外で発売開始されました。MSRP は430ドルと380ドル、そしてノン t i モデルは300ドルです。5070の希望小売価格より 22% 安くなる感じです。で、この 5060ti って60万台なわけで一番数が出るはずなんですね。RTX50 シリーズの稼ぎ頭なんですけど、ビデオカーズなんかだと 8GB モデルは NVIDIA があんまり売る気ないみたいな書かれ方してるんですね。その一時情報が異教授でおなじみのハードウェアアンボックスドなんですけど、今回何がやばいのか解説してくれてるもんで翻訳しました。結論から言うと、売る気がないんじゃなくてその逆でした。情報が拡散される前に売り切ってしまおうっていう NVIDIA の思惑が見えてきます。というわけで概要欄に元動画のリンクを貼っておきますので内容が良かったらご面倒ですけれど、イケオジのチャンネルにいいねをお願いします。それじゃ、最後まで楽しんでいってね。Hard to know what's going on there. The 16 gig card should definitely be available on the 16th, and Nvidia claim there will be reasonable supply at launch. But again, that's what they've said about previous launches too, so that should be taken with a huge grain of salt. Now, while the launch is claimed to be the same day for the two variants, Nvidia are only sampling the 16 gig card for reviews, so that is what will be covered on launch day. But it goes beyond that because we've been told that AIBs will not be supplying the 8 gig card for reviews, and in fact, cannot supply the 8 gig card for reviews. Despite Nvidia giving us permission to source 8 gb models for day one reviews, board partners told us they were unable to send us a graphics card, in some cases because they weren't ready, but in other cases because Nvidia had explicitly Prevented them from doing so. So the RTX 5060 Ti 8GB might be launching on April 16th. We're still not sure about that, but best case, there could be limited availability on that day. But you won't see reviews for that model because board partners can't sample it. And that's bad. Now, we asked Nvidia whether they were prioritizing the 16GB card over the 8GB for this release, and they initially said they weren't prioritizing one model over the other. But then later in our briefing, actually admitted they were prioritizing the 16 gig model. So the mixed messaging here is super weird. Supposedly launching both models on the same day, but only making it possible to review the 16 gig cards is very bad for casual GeForce buyers. Both models have a very similar name, and the 8 gig card will be the cheapest model at retailers. So those who are unaware of the difference will be hunting for the best value model and running into the 8 gigabyte card. But all the reviews, all the feedback, and potential hype will be based off the 16 gigabyte variant, which won't have the VRAM limitations of the cheaper model. It seems this is an attempt to manipulate day one reception into focusing on the 16 gigabyte card while still sliding out a cheaper, crappier model that piggybacks. On the reception of the better card, ultimately selling it to unsuspecting buyers. Even worse is how Nvidia are handling the RTX 5060. This card launches in May with no specified launch date, and would you believe it, the review embargo for this card expires on April 16th along with the RTX 5060 Ti. This means there is no explicit launch date for this card, no launch day coverage, no sampling, no review program. It's a free for all. In most circumstances, cards will be hitting store shelves for gamers to buy before anyone critically evaluates them and figures out whether the product is good or not. A complete contrast to other graphics card launches, where usually buyers are made aware of the strengths and weaknesses either before or alongside the release. Nvidia insisted to us that doing this is not burying the RTX 5060, but to us, this sure looks like Nvidia are trying to bury the RTX 5060. If I wanted to bury critical evaluations of this GPU, I would do exactly what Nvidia has done release the model on some random day that no one knows with no early reviews or samples. This means some people will be buying it without a review at all. The reviewers that rely on review samples and can't justify buying the card themselves will not cover the 5060 at all, and other reviews will be delayed until after people have bought it. This has the effect of minimizing review coverage relative to a product with a broad review program, like the RTX 5090. But again, Nvidia say that they aren't burying the 5060. Now, of course, reviewers aren't entitled to review samples, but it's a really bad look to be willing to provide cards like the RTX 5070 and 5080 weeks before launch so that reviews can be released the day before they go on sale, while the RTX 5060 is just shoved out onto the market without coverage. 
The contrast between those launches makes it look like NVIDIA want to bury or hide the RTX 5060, the same playbook used for cards like the crappy RTX 3056 gigabyte. Though I'm interested to hear your comments, your thoughts if you disagree, so leave those in the comments below. NVIDIA provided some let's be honest, rather laughable reasons for going down this path. One is that they are launching too many products at once and aren't able to focus on the RTX 5060. This of course makes absolutely no sense. First of all, Nvidia could just change the release schedule so that they could focus on the 5060 if that was a real problem, but also because they were able to launch all of the RTX 5090, 5080, and 5070 Ti within the space of three weeks, all of which had full review programs. So I'm not buying that answer. It's BS especially because the 60 class is extremely popular and in any reasonable lineup should be a major focus. They also claim that the audience for the RTX 5060 isn't enthusiasts that would watch review channels like Hardware Unboxed, so launch reviews are less important, or I guess not important at all. This is both not true and also a cop-out. Hardware Unbox viewers are not just all rich gamers able to afford RTX 5090s. There are lots of people, lots of you guys that watch our channel and other tech channels that buy mainstream graphics cards. The reviews we've made for previous entry-level and mainstream cards have been very popular. So claiming a $300 GPU isn't meant for PC enthusiasts is ridiculous. You could maybe say that for absolute bottom of the barrel, $150 stuff that a lot of enthusiast gamers ignore, but for literally the most popular card in NVIDIA's lineup every year, surely NVIDIA didn't think we'd buy this reason, while simultaneously claiming in the same briefing that gamers love the 60 series. So gamers love it, but enthusiast gamers don't care about mainstream GPU reviews? What are NVIDIA on about? I was actually kind of losing my mind in our briefing listening to these excuses. Our take, so both myself and Steve's opinion after discussing it earlier today, is really simple. NVIDIA are anticipating that the RTX 5060 Ti 8GB and RTX 5060 8GB will be destroyed in reviews because they have insufficient VRAM. It's a really hot topic at the moment. There are lots of channels making content about how 8GB isn't enough for modern gaming in the lead up to these products. So instead of having their new 60 class GPUs cop tons of negative feedback from everyone, they're trying to limit the damage by focusing on the 16 gig 5060 Ti and leaving the rest to rot, only to be covered by those that will purchase one for review after they go on sale. This strongly appears to be a case of burying the 8GB models despite what NVIDIA are attempting to claim. Ultimately, it doesn't appear like NVIDIA are confident the 8GB cards are good products that are worth buying. Their actions are saying that they do not believe in these products and are not confident these products will be well received. Companies that are proud of their products want to spread the word and highlight their qualities. NVIDIA are doing the opposite. And while we're talking about highlighting their qualities, NVIDIA are still insisting on marketing these cards as offering 2x the frame rate of previous models, though I guess they're changing up the wording slightly to refer more to frame rate than performance as they did with the RTX 5070. This includes showing examples like running Black Myth Wukong at 102 FPS with multi-frame generation enabled and Cyberpunk 2077 at 108 FPS. The problem, of course, is that both examples see the game running with a base render rate below 30 FPS with high latency, which is a truly horrible experience despite the smoothness of multi-frame generation outputting over 100 FPS. I mean, seriously, what are we even doing here, guys? NVIDIA needs to take a step back and look at how stupidly far they are willing to push this 2x frame rate stuff when selling new products. These sorts of claims might have worked originally years ago, but gamers aren't buying it anymore. These are the sorts of examples that are used to criticize or make fun of NVIDIA. And believing this is a good experience is full-blown drinking the Kool-Aid stuff. We've gone so far away from configurations that might be reasonable. And yes, there are configurations where it is reasonable to use frame generation and the experience isn't that bad. But we've gone so far away from that that we're in the silly realm now. NVIDIA need to look at this from an outside perspective and really think about whether these sorts of claims are helping or hurting the GeForce brand. I don't even know what else to say about the RTX 5060 series. Honestly, I struggled to process some of the excuses that we used during our briefing.